So it's my duty to go. So I'm proud to go to serve the country. Though I don't agree with the war. I don't think we should have been there to begin with. Um, but we don't have a choice. So we go with the, all these uh, government officials, all the American people elected them in the office, make these decisions. So uh, it's not really up to me just, you know, to decide whether or not to go and so going because uh, I support I support my men. I need to lead my guys. I want to make sure they're taken care of. And, um, I'm going just to do my part too since I'm American. So I served on an 18-month deployment to Iraq in 2007-2008. That was during President Bush's surge. And what makes that unique is that prior to that, a typical army deployment was only 12 months. My job was as an engineer lieutenant. I was a brand new second lieutenant straight out of West Point, you know, eager to join the fight and do my part. But I was leading a, a group of soldiers, engineer soldiers, and we were essentially human metal detectors. Um, and that's, that's tough for me to, to admit. Uh, the Army gave us some really expensive multi-million dollar pieces of equipment to drive and basically we were just driving around until we got hit by uh, an IED which is which means improvised explosive device but it's just a fancy term for a booby trap that the enemy would put out. I experienced a lot of things and saw things that um, you know no one should ever have to see. So <clears throat> fast forward to our family, <laughs> Sophie uh, took the lead on the whole research and uh, doing the homestead thing. It's so like a good husband, I wanted to support her, but I didn't fully buy into that life. I, I'll, I'll admit, I didn't think ever in a million years would I become a farmer. Uh, we were in the Bay Area, we were, I was at the height of my real estate career and we were taking trips to Hawaii. I thought that's the American dream. But 2020 happened and it really shook up our family. And we really needed to have access to food, especially, you know, during that time they were closing the doors on the grocery stores that we would go to. And we knew this was real. So we I embraced it. I, I, I supported my wife and we began homesteading in California and we built a, we built a pretty nice homestead up there. And right after we got done building it, <laughs> she said, hey, hon, the, you know, she's, she's a, a mortgage broker and she said, you know, I see the interest rates are starting to move up and we've talked about exploring other places. You know, this would be our last opportunity to start looking. And then I said, well, you know, I guess it doesn't hurt to look, but secretly I really didn't want to go. I wanted to stay. But I'm glad we went. And after exploring multiple states and getting to know the community and the local coffee shops, I told her we were like doing speed dating on the communities. We, we found our community here in Tennessee. And we haven't looked back since then. And today, I am the homesteading realtor out here. I've taken the skills that I learned in California doing real estate, and I've applied it today helping others who are looking to escape the busy, busy lives that they have in the cities and the suburbs and want what we have. That they, they want to be able to grow their own food. They want to know where their food comes from and they want land, they want property, they want a homestead, they want to embrace this lifestyle. And I'm more than happy to walk them through this journey. I didn't go into raising livestock to, to heal myself really, but it was only through the process and that journey that it took taking care of the animals. I just got the sense of peace and I really looked forward to every day waking up to feeding them because you know, they're relying on me to give them water, give them food, and really just embracing that whole concept of being a good steward of the land and steward of the livestock, the animals. 
I just truly appreciate what they do for my family and I. They, yes, they provide food for us, but I would often spend time just outside, just walking them, whether I'm walking the goat and Sophie would uh, make fun of me because I had this little lead and I would just walk the goat like I would be walking the dog. But who am I kidding? You don't walk the LGDs and you don't necessarily walk the goat either. That's only if you have to move them from one location to another. But I, I had a lot of fun. So I receive a lot of healing because knowing that the animals serve a purpose and my job as a farmer and as the head of household is to provide for my family, but to also take good care of my animals. That's feeding them the best stuff, that's giving them the minerals that they need, the nutrients that they need, and allowing them to free range. If these animals were in any other farm that was farming conventionally, they would just be stuck in their own manure and not and being confined in tight spaces. And I feel good knowing that my animals can live their best lives here and that they just have one bad day. They just have one bad day and then they can, uh, and I feel good knowing that then they are providing for my family, but that, you know, I took good care of these animals. Thank you so much for joining me today and allowing me to share my story with you. It's not easy to share my military experience or the PTSD that I suffered from, but I do believe that many of us have suffered from PTSD, especially since 2020. In fact, if you've experienced some sort of PTSD, I would love to hear from you if you just comment below and if you've received healing and how you did and how you went about that, I would be really interested in, in hearing from you.